Alright, in this video we're going to go over the parts I chose for my 6.5 Creedmoor Precision Rifle build and why I chose those parts. I just didn't pick the newest and coolest parts out there for a rifle build. I took my time and thought about each part and how it would function together as a whole. The first two things you need for a rifle build are your receivers, your lower and your upper receiver. I chose to go with an Aero Precision receiver set for a couple of reasons. First reason is I like how they look. I like the lines of it. I like the design. The second part would be the price. It's my opinion that the Aero Precision AR-10 receiver sets are the highest quality for the lowest price you can get. And the lower receiver, at least the second gen lower receivers, come with a little feature that I really like. The Gen 2 lower receivers comes with a nylon tip set screw to adjust the tension that is put on the receiver takedown pin to reduce any wiggle between the upper and lower receivers. Now although this Aero Precision receiver set is supposed to be a matched set, if I really wanted to get crazy with the precision build, what I would actually do is I would take the upper receiver and I would weld aluminum on the takedown and pivot lugs and then put the upper receiver on a mill and mill down the takedown and pivot lugs to where it is an exact fit to that lower receiver and there would be no wiggling or play between the two receivers. To do that takes skill and it takes equipment like a mill. I have the skill and I have access to a mill but I'm not going to take it that far. I'm just going to go the easy way and use that nylon tip set screw in the lower receiver. Now I did do one modification and that was to the upper receiver where I lapped the upper receiver to make sure that the front face of the receiver where the barrel extension slides into is completely perpendicular to the bore of the barrel and the bore of the upper receiver where the bolt carrier slides back and forth. Now when building a precision AR-10 or AR-15, the parts that you really want to pay attention to and probably spend a little bit more money in getting are all the parts that are along the bore axis or interact with the bore axis. The bore axis being this, everything along this line, as in the barrel, the fire control group, the bolt carrier assembly, the buffer, buffer spring, and stock with the last two parts being the muzzle device, if the end of your barrel is threaded, and a gas block, preferably an adjustable gas block. Now the first part we're gonna look at is the barrel I chose for this build. I chose to try a Christensen Arms carbon fiber wrap barrel. The 6.5 Creedmoor barrel from Christensen Arms is 20 inches long with a one in eight twist. And it comes with a gas block and gas tube, but seeing as how it's not adjustable, I chose not to use it. Now the fit and finish on the Christensen Arms barrel is pretty good, but I did have one complaint, and that was when it came to the barrel extension. Now when it comes to barrel extensions and precision, there are barrel extensions that have a standard overall diameter to fit into the upper receiver, but you can also get slightly oversized barrel extensions. The slightly oversized barrel extensions will give the barrel a more precise fit into the upper receiver. You won't have any wiggle room or play. If you have wiggle room or play, I would highly suggest you lap your upper receiver to make sure that the barrel is encanted in any direction after you've torqued down the barrel nut. It seems that my proof research barrel had an oversized barrel extension where it was a press fit. I had to use the barrel nut to actually press the barrel extension into the upper receiver. As you saw in the upper receiver assembly video, this Christian's Arms barrel had a lot of play in that aero precision upper receiver so I did lap the upper receiver and bed the barrel extension into the upper receiver. Next is my bolt carrier group. I went with the JP Rifles 308 low mass bolt carrier group. I went with the low mass bolt carrier group for two reasons. One, it looks nice because it's all shiny right? Second reason was to keep it light. I plan on competing with this rifle, so I want to keep it as lightweight as possible, seeing as how I'm only working with my spare arm. And I knew I was going to be running an adjustable gas block, so I'll be able to tune it and make sure that it's cycling properly. Next are the two parts that are right behind the bolt carrier group, and that's the buffer spring and buffer. I went with a JP Rifles polished and tuned 308 buffer spring, and for the buffer, I went with the CTS Engineering Active Recoil Buffer. Now, I don't know if you know about this buffer or not, but I'm going to be making a video just on this buffer alone, so stay tuned for that. 
And for the buffer tube and stock, I went with a standard A2 length rifle buffer tube. And I went with the Magpul Precision Rifle Stock. And it's kind of obvious why I chose this stock, right? It's kind of in the name. And now we're going to go to the part that interacts with the bore axis, which is your fire control group. Now for the fire control group, again, I went with a JP Rifles component. And that's their easy trigger fire control package. But instead of the standard package, I opted for the Armageddon Gear Revolution Roller Trigger. Now on the Precision Rifle lower receiver build, I went into detail on how to install this thing. So if you want to know that, check out that video. Now the next part is the muzzle device that I chose. And I went for a 6.8 Surefire SFMB muzzle brake slash suppressor adapter. And that's because in the future, I'm going to add a Surefire SOCOM can. And the gas block I went with was a SLR Rifle Works Sentry 9 adjustable gas block. And it's the set screw version because this Christensen Arms carbon fiber barrel has dimples already drilled in it. And again, I got the adjustable gas block to work in tandem with that low mass bolt carrier group to make sure this rifle cycles perfectly. And the last piece of the puzzle would be the handguard I chose, which is a 16-inch SLR Rifle Works M-Lock Solo Ultralight Rail. And they call it an ultralight for a reason. Even with it being 16 inches, I'm pretty sure that this thing, including the barrel nut, is lighter than just the carbon fiber portion of my AR-15's Lancer handrail. And another reason why I went with the SLR Rifle Works Solo Ultralight Rail is because of the barrel nut. The barrel nut is a low-profile barrel nut that doesn't need to be be indexed so that the gas tube will run through the receiver properly. Now that takes care of every part that's along the bore axis and as you saw in the intro this is what the rifle looks like complete. Adding a Magpul grip and a Burris XTR2 8-40 held in an American Defense 34mm scope mount with a 20 MOA cant. Now you might have saw the video before this one, the first shots video, which was the first 20 rounds shot through this rifle using prime 130 grain 6.5 Creedmoor ammo. I'm still breaking the barrel in so I'm going to be testing three different rounds to see which one this likes to eat best. The 130 grain prime ammo, the 140 Hornady ELD match ammo or the 143 Hornady ELD precision hunter ammo. Well that's it and if you liked the video go ahead and click that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Let me know what you guys think in the comments or you can always head over to our Facebook page check us out and I actually got a new website up so if you want to see the other videos I've done go check it out. Take it easy. See you next time.